of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge, as promised. Uh, welcome, welcome to, to the, the show. show, Mark. Okay. <laughs> hey, Anthony, how you doing? Oh, we're doing all right. <laughs> so... Ashley's been jumping up and down like a little kid here for, uh, if you for a week and a if, half now. I was going to say, if you've been listening to the show for like the last couple of weeks, I have been like a little schoolgirl giddy about this. Jumping up and down. And it's finally here. Completely, <laughs> yeah, like, like a... God, well, that's per- so great. Yeah. yeah. So, glad you're all right, because uh, we were a little worried about you last week when you... <laughs> yeah, those late night dancing we out. We couldn't find you. Stuck in the rain, whatever it was. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, no, we love the we love the dancing here. You know? I, I I can but see the you know because of where I live, I live in a tropical rainforest. So uh huh. When the weather changes, the weather's like Maui, but now we're changing into the heat. Right. Everybody gets this. I, I, as you can tell, I've i kind of lost my voice a little bit. Okay. And, um, so that just happened. I just couldn't talk last week. Well, just, you, you, I was going to say, we're from Boston. We're, we have the New England area. Like two weeks ago, it was 90 degrees. Now it's like 40. So I know the weather's really weird. It's, it is. It's crazy. It is. <laughs> Uh, I see a picture of you here, and, and you've got two, uh, maybe three young women dancing with you. Is this is this what goes on down in Puerto Vallarta, <laughs> or wherever you are these days? Cozumel, Acapulco, where are you? Everybody dances here. There you go. That's a party town. I should be there. It's a party town? Never been there. Why aren't you there? As long as you can dance. I can dance. I can hold my arm. Oh, unless you can dance, you cannot stay there. Is that it? <laughs> All right. It's in the rental agreements. Okay. I see. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about your acting career. Got to gotta know. Got to know. <laughs> How did you get the role for Nightmare on Elm Street 2 for the role of Jesse? Well, I had originally screen tested for the part that Johnny Depp played in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 1. Okay. And then when part 2 came around, um, they had narrowed down the list. Well, actually, my picture ended up in the trash can a couple of times. <laughs> I know how that feels. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, and it's because the casting director, Annette Benson, didn't think that I was right for the role. And Annette's a good friend of mine, so it wasn't anything really personal. And then uh, Mike Murphy picked it up off the floor and said, he's perfect. And I guess it was myself and Brad Pitt. and. Um, oh, wow. These are the uh, people you were up against for this movie? So. Um, Brad Pitt was up for this role. That was it. It was great. That's crazy. Like you could actually say you beat Brad Brad Pitt Brad, on a role. Brad Pitt was up for the same role. Was up for this role. An unknown Brad Pitt was up for this role. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, That's you know, wild. in Hollywood at that time, or even now, um, there's only about 20 guys who are actually really viable for any part of, of a lead in a movie mm-hmm. at any time. Yes. And they're the kind of pack, and you see them all the time. Um, and that's when you're in the casting stage. Mm-hmm. So, and then the next thing that comes is you leave what's called the casting stage. You don't audition anymore. Yes. And then very shortly after that, like most of those guys were out of what you would call the casting stage. Like Johnny Depp was definitely out of the casting stage by then. He, the people would just offer him the role. Really? And um, mm. so, yeah. So, okay. um, oh, I, I remember I auditioned with, for... Uh, with Tom Cruise for Taps, and I... Oh, did. wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, I, I did the full Francis Ford Coppola deal for uh-huh. uh, uh, The Outsiders, you know? Max, yeah. Maxwell Caulfield, I think, was my brother in our... But I was in the blonde group. That's so, crazy. Yeah, so so uh, there were like so many cool. roles in that movie. How did you not get... How did you not beat out Ralph Macchio or something? I mean, there's so many parts <laughs> Damn in Damn you, movie. Brad Pitt. Well, <laughs> well, you know, they had a blonde cast and they had a, a dark cast. And they went with the dark cast. Gotcha. They, they were originally, in the book, oh, they're, they're all blonde. You know, they're like sort of right. like oh, Polish kind of guys. see. But, um, but they went with all the darkies. So, so they took all you know, the dark hair guys. And uh, so they got your Rob Lowe and uh-huh. all those quirky guys. So you basically, you knew them. I mean, you weren't personal friends with them, but you knew them from, from doing the run. From casting calls. and from Oh, you, sure, sure. Uh, well, a lot of people, wild. you know, we were very good friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it, you can't spend, we spend all our time together. I mean, yes. Right. You, you have to realize, you know, sometimes I would have 10 auditions a day. So these are the people that you really kind of live with. And then the relationships with some of them last and, and some don't. Um, but, I mean, I do have three or four good friends who have lasted, the, you know, the lifetime. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, you know, like, um, 
I used to live next door to Robert Downey Jr. He lived next door to me, mm -hmm. Sarah Parker. Uh, yeah. And then they rented my house, and um, <laughs> they destroyed it because they were young kids. Well, and, Robert Downey uh, Jr. is kind of, like a, kind of a party, kind of a party animal. He like the get the rap. He like the party. But you know, like Robert has exactly the same friends that now that he did that. I mean, it's right. Robert Russler and Neil Barry, and the, I mean, the, you know, you like sort of hook with people they your life. And so I, you know, I have some friends that are very famous, and mm -hmm. those uh, friendships are really personal, and I you see. know, you, they're just friends of yours. Right. But well, like, not, uh, yeah. You know, we were kids together. Well, I, I remember, I read it somewhere. You probably can tell me if it's true or not. I remember, because you just mentioned Robert uh, Russier. Uh, when he auditioned for the film, he came with Robert Downey Jr. right from the set, uh, from the shoot of uh, Weird Science, to audition for the role. He did, yeah. And I heard that they both actually auditioned. They did. And, See, uh, yeah, I have my Robert inside stuff. The, Robert actually was the first person hired. Robert Russell. Right. Because I, re I remember reading that somewhere, and I'm like, wow, I'm actually going to ask this question. And I'm like, yeah, I'm so, I'm so on the inside. You're like, on the inside. I know you, what's going you on. You did your homework. I did yeah. my homework. You did. <laughs> right, I love that. Yeah, because I heard that. I'm like, I'm surprised Robert Downey Jr. didn't get hired. How did he not get hired? <laughs> I mean, when you look <laughs> back. Robert, you, you look back on him, and you just go, how? How? I, the part I wanted more than any part yes. of the world was uh, I wanted to be in less than zero. And, oh, really? Um, and the part that Robert Downey Jr. played. Oh. And uh, that book, everybody had that book. And I was, right, you know, right. I really wanted that. And in the book, the description of the guy is like me. Yes. And, I mean, looked like me. And I was, right. I really uh -huh. wanted that. So it was now, calling you. It was you. I yeah. back on Robert's life. I'm, I'm pretty glad I didn't. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to be Robert the movie star. I just wouldn't like to be Robert the well, just, just think if it, went, if it went that way, yes. he could be Iron Man right now. You could, you be, could Iron be Iron Man. Man if it had gone that you way. You could be Iron Man. Well, it could have gone a lot of different ways. I could have yeah. been right to Angelina. You could have been, yeah, but you, but you could you could have been Iron Man. Like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> Sherlock <laughs> Holmes. <laughs> yeah, he could have been Sherlock. Who knows? <laughs> oh, wow. How was working with Freddy? Because I hear he's uh, with Freddy Krueger, with uh, Robert Englund, because I hear uh, that he's actually really cool to work around. Oh, Robert's a great guy. And, um, you know, I knew Robert before Nightmare on Elm Street. And he's a really fantastic character actor. I was actually, you know, I'm going to interview Robert. I'm doing a new thing called Stock Talk. Yes, I saw and, that. Yeah, and it's, and it's around the conventions, you know. It's like, because uh, we have access to all these people. And it's not a typical, like, they're not typical, like, horror uh, interviews. And it's more like um, just Robert... England, not uh, Robert England, Freddy Krueger. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, one of the questions for him was, uh, you know, what would your life be without, what would it be like if you weren't Freddy Krueger? Mm -hmm. You know, and Robert, uh, you know, would have had a fantastic career with or without um, Nightmare on Elm Street. You know, he had an amazing career before. And well, he's done a lot of directorial work. He's done acting. He's, done, he's produced. He's done it all. Oh my God! Yeah, and you yeah. know, he, when he was young, he was in some amazing movies, and I think there's one movie, one of the um, the movies about uh, the surfing movie with Gary Busey, the insane. Gary Busey. Well, yeah. I remember uh, him. I remember him from the V miniseries before V it came out a year before Nightmare did, and yeah. people were saying to me, "Oh, I wonder what this guy looks like," and I'm like, "Ever watch V?" It was like. One of the most popular things yeah, back in 1983. It didn't last long. But it was a miniseries, and everybody watched it. And I'm like, yeah. he played Willie. And people were like, you remember that? And I'm like, well, yeah, I guess I, I, I remember the little things like that. But it was funny that I knew this guy, like, what he, what, you know, his other roles before he became famous. It's what I do. Yeah, when you saw Robert on screen, you, like, you never forgot. And, like, the first time I saw him was in Buster and Billy. Okay. And he was oh. playing an albino, and uh, I remember thinking, where where do they find an albino that can act? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, in that surf thing, they had, like, two of the seriously craziest people in this. Jan Michael Vincent. Oh, he's okay. another creature. Yeah, he's a creature. And, and, uh, <laughs> creature. and of course, Gary Busey. So I, two I drinkers. Robert, like, made it out alive. Drinkers and drugs. I can hear that. Those people are crazy. Those, <laughs> those boys are seriously crazy. Yeah. No, I can... What I've heard, and Anthony actually, when I told him this stuff, 
He's like, I never heard that. But um, there have been a lot, a lot of talk about uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Well, one, because it really kind of deviated from uh, the mythology of Freddy. And um, it came off... A lot of people saying it was like a really, like, I can't think of a nice way to put it, but like a gay entry. It was very, it had a lot of gay, like, undertones in it. Like, if people watch it, they go, oh, that's so gay, that's so gay. And and it's it's weird, but you watch some of these scenes, it's like, I'm surprised they didn't catch this stuff. Well, you know what? It's like, uh, I think that's a nice way to say it, and it's like really cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. If you've seen Never Sleep Again, I don't know. I did. I actually have seen it. And, uh, you know, I, for all your listeners out there, you should definitely, if you're a Nightmare on Elm Street fan, you mm-hmm. should get Never Sleep Again. Yes. Uh, you know, it was all intentional, and it was, uh, um, you know, it was the writer's, you know, kind of inside joke that he thought nobody else would get. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, of course, you know, any eight-year-old got it. Uh, Everybody and, <laughs> you know, and it. And it turned into a weird thing. It was like, it was very... You know, excuse my language, but it was very fucked up for my career. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I saw Nightmare 2 the, on opening night. And uh, I remember, I was what? Oh my God, I'm aging myself. I'm, uh, I was like 17, uh-huh. maybe 18 years old. And I'm like, wow, that's really, that, that comes off as looking gay. And right. people around me were like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I still liked it. Don't get me wrong. I, I love the entry, but it was just like, I was more upset that, Freddie was more into the real world than the dream world. And he only had like 17 minutes of screen time. So that was my beef with the movie. So I didn't really yeah, mind so much. Like that, the, all those rules were set uh, in part three. They weren't really set in part one. Anymore. Exactly. You know, because, uh, and it's interesting when you think about it. I wrote this thing called There Is uh, Jesse's Lost Journals. Yes. And, um, you know, it's going to be published on Amazon at the end of this month. It's Excellent. Been on Static Mass. And, you know, I always, I always hated the end of the movie. I, did, I just didn't like it. Yeah, and, uh, I know. So I rewrote it and, um, in my secret journals. And I always thought that, you know, Nancy was, Nancy and Jesse were like sort of the yin and yang of, of Freddy. Right. And that, uh, uh, that she was the nighttime and I was the daytime. She was the the key to the dream world and I was the key to the real world. Right. And if they would have hooked those things together, Mm -hmm. um, it would have been interesting. But because Wes was directing it, Mm -hmm. Wes didn't really want to have anything to do with part two. Uh, He didn't really want to have anything to do with part three either. Right, he had a small role in that. um, uh, But when he saw that it was going to turn into this huge franchise, Mm -hmm. then then he hopped back on board. But he he never wanted a sequel, period. I know, he's not a sequel person. You know, so... He wasn't happy about that, and he's never spoke fondly of it. Although, you know, again, I'm friends with Wes, and he's a really nice guy, and I respect him and everything. So, uh, our but our movie is was incredibly, incredibly popular in Europe and in Asia, mm-hmm. and um, and still continues to be, and it sort of had a real rebirth uh, yeah. as people grow up. And yeah. um, it's fun. You know, I've been to Europe like six times this year. Yeah, and. Um, you know, the people just go crazy for Nightmare on Elm Street, too. So, I, you know, I, so you never know what's going to happen, right? Because right, I saw Never Sleep Again. I've seen that. And, uh, what is I this Never Sleep Again? It's a, it's a documentary on oh, the Nightmare it's a documentary. series. Oh, okay. And um, I remember, it, I think it was on that, that Robert uh, England was saying that the one thing he didn't like about Nightmare 2 is they were, they were actually thinking about... Doing, having somebody else play his character and it was mm-hmm. like I think he had like, like literally like 17 minutes of film for the uh, film and it was like one scene where he was walking into the showers where it wasn't even him playing the character and because oh, they had this yeah, yeah it was, no, Robert wasn't hired at the beginning they hired right. somebody else because yeah. it was like it's just Freddy there's somebody behind the mask you can't see it uh-huh. and Robert's yeah. argument was that it's it's more than just a car- you know a person behind the latex. It's a whole character. It's a mindset. This is somebody that I've become when I'm on the set because it, you 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 can you can see that it's not somebody. When you I watched the scene he was talking about in the movie, you can just see the guy just literally just walks on. He doesn't have the Freddy walk, the stance, nothing. It looks so so fake. Oh, so okay. yeah, I, I totally agree with Mr. England on that one. Like definitely, you have oh, to get that back. Too, but you know what the deal was that. Nobody really expected Robert to become the star. Ah. Well, yeah. I mean, like you said, look, we saw him on V, and then it was like right. latex mask, and yeah. Yeah, well, in, in horror movies at that time, the person that became the star was the girl. 
And, right. uh, you know, the expectation was that Heather Langenkamp would become the big star, oh, not really? Robert England. I see. And that the movies would be based around Heather or whoever replaced Heather. Right. So, oh, okay. um, Robert was just sort of, they thought he would be sort of like a Jason character, and you could just... He would play. Uh, you could stick anybody, anybody in the hat, anybody. Yeah. Right, you know, right. give it to it. But they realized after three days that wasn't going to work. And, um, yeah. and, and then, wrong. you know, Robert hijacked the movie. I mean, he, like, he became the deal. Well, you know what it was? And, and, and this that's is the way, you know, show business works. That's, well, you know what and this, this is... You know, honestly, I like... Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I like all the nightmares because they're like, all these people are kind of my family. But, hey, um, but I liked it when, and I don't mean this in a weird way, I liked it when there was less of Robert. I like, I think there should have been about 20, 25 minutes of, of Freddy in the film. And uh, Freddy, I think, in Nightmare on Elm Street 2 is at his most frightening. Because you don't and, see him. Uh, and the makeup is incredible. And he's still funny, you know what I mean? But he still is scary. I mean, he's oh, yeah. he, he really scares you. Like that scene in the hall where he has the the glove in my eye is mm -hmm. a very scary. For me, it was a very scary scene. You know, you've got the body. I've got the brains. Laughs, but, yeah. I love yeah, that. Why did they think the girl was going? Is that based because Jamie Lee Curtis became a big star in Halloween? Is that what the the thinking was? Oh God, yeah. I, I mean, was gonna say the screen girl, queen, yeah. you know, like there's, you know, there's the rules of horror films from the '80s, like yeah. the first blonde always dies. Yeah. Right, sex yeah. is always murder. You can always die when you have sex or do drugs. Always. Exactly. Oh. And so I mean, <laughs> the, the, the rule, huh? Guy. I mean, they were they were going right off, you know, a formula. Oh. Okay. And really, the expectation was was that that Heather Langenkamp would become like Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh -huh. Right. Didn't happen. And. Um, and so that was the way that it was going to go. Mm. But that's not what happened. No, what happened? No, I mean, it was just like right. the people chose something else. You know, the people who saw well, the movie, you know, yeah. they saw something in Robert. And then, you know, I mean, Bob Shea had no idea, and he'll tell you this, you know, flat out. He had no idea that he was creating one of the iconic... I don't think any of them did. Images of the 20th century. That's the thing about film, is that you don't realize you're creating the icon while you're doing it. It's usually yeah. like 10 years later, you go, what did I create? I'm sure Wes Craven, you know, didn't realize he was creating an no, icon. No, he, he did other movies, too. The right, he's done eyes, so many films. The people under the, the thing is, The thing is, like I, don't, I think they didn't understand was, you know... Because I know, like, with the Friday the 13th series and the Halloween series, there was always a different guy under the mask. It was, right. it was very rare. Until Kane Hodder came around, Jason was always somebody different. And the thing is that Robert Englund, as opposed to, say, the, Fre the, uh, the Freddy Kruegers, as, as opposed to the Jason Voorhees and the Michael Myers, I'm really into all these films, <laughs> um, is, that, tell. is that Freddy Krueger had a character. Jason and Michael Myers just stood there and just hit you with their weapon. Freddy actually taunted you. Freddy actually had the facial expressions, the walk, the way he did everything. He had a really good past. It was just everything. He made that character by the way he portrayed the character, whereas Jason and Michael just stood there and were motionless or yeah, emotionless. Freddy talked. The other two didn't right. talk. He talked. He had a whole mannerism, the way he swaggered, everything was was Robert Englund being Freddy Krueger. And, and I don't well, think they know, realized no that. No offense to anybody else, but that's what happens when you get a great actor in your role. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, it doesn't matter how big your part is or um, any of those things. It's what you do with those couple of sure. minutes that you're on screen. Right. right, right. right. I mean, and, yeah. You know, and then that's what comes across. Right. I mean, any and character like that. People can, yeah. If people can look in your eyes and they see you're alive and they see you're real, that's what makes you a movie star. Oh, yeah, and it brings that character to life. I mean, it really does. If Freddy Krueger was motionless like a Jason Voorhees, they wouldn't have come this far. The whole idea that he taunts you, plays with you before he kills you, that's the whole essence of Freddy Krueger. That's why everybody loves him so much, because, I mean, it, it, they want to be on his side. You want to be his friend. It's, it's weird, but it's like you side with Freddy Krueger. You side with Freddy When you're watching huh? these films, really? you're actually siding really? with him. Really? Okay. And I, I tell you, when, you, when, really? you have a, when you have a... a, 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 a a, a, a bad guy like that in these films, I hate it when they replace them. Like, I'll give you one good example. They replaced Doug Bradley as, as Pinhead in the Hellraiser series. Now, albeit the, the, the new Hellraiser movie that came on video is a piece of crap. <laughs> so maybe he 
he dodged a bullet there. But the fact that they would go with someone else when Doug Bradley, who portrayed uh, Pinhead, made this character what he is. It's just you can see the difference when you replace them. It's like even with these reboots, you can see the difference in the character. It's just Robert England is Freddy Krueger. There's right. no other way to say so it. A lot of it is like the people that come on are different directors or they're oh, yeah. different line producers. Or right. Like and most of the time they're young in these franchises mm -hmm. and they they want to be um, they want to be the big boss. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And most of them are young and they don't really right. you know understand what they're messing with. I mean, a perfect example of that is the new nightmare. And I don't think Robert should have been uh, in the new nightmare. You know what I mean? But they made a huge mistake when they didn't speak to him. Right. And, I agree. And also to Heather. Because they should have paid him uh, a couple of million dollars just to walk around and say how much he liked it. Mm. Um, because they alienated his fans so much. Mm. I would like to see a walk on roll. It didn't matter what the movie was like. They weren't going to like it no matter what. Because they had dissed Robert and they had dissed Heather. And... Right. Uh, and that was young people. That's a young person's mistake. Right. I mean, you don't have, you know, the star of a billion-dollar franchise, and you redo the movie. The first person you talk to is him. Whether exactly. you want him to be in the movie or not, that's the first person you go to. Yeah. Because he can bring the fans to you. And, like, I know you guys go to conventions and whatnot. Yeah, and I do. And when you go to a convention to see Robert, you stand in line for five and a half hours to get a signature and, you know, spend a couple of hundred dollars to spend a couple of seconds with him. And that's 25 years after the fact. Exactly. You know, so, um, so you know, so they just made a mistake, I think. Oh, okay. Because I, I think at the very least, they should have had a walk-on role or been offered a walk-on role. But then you a small little role. Freddy's in the same movie. He no, would but have they been just another character. Right, I'm like, even if he was the, in the beginning of the new Nightmare a police movie, officer or something. Like if he was the guy behind the, the diner counter or something, or if, if Heather was a yeah, was People a waitress. ask us that all the time, with yeah. you, and none of us would. No. Because you'd be surprised. Some people do. I know they made the, they made the A-Team remake. So you don't want to go from being the star of a movie. To, to being Yeah, uh, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. So it, it no, kind of goes either tough way. tough to do that. Now, this is one thing I, I have to ask, because this is one thing I actually, I remember told you about, uh -huh. Anthony, and, and I, I'm actually reading it online as we speak. You have, like, become what they call a screen queen from this movie. <laughs> You're like the first male screen queen. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> oh, I do, too, yeah. It's like, you know, I, I'm, I'm really pleased with it. It's yeah. Like, I started the screen queens for Day of the Dead. Days <laughs> yeah, the I day. saw that. <laughs> And um, you and went Heather. We travel, and you know it's like uh, Linnea Quigley and uh, PJ Souls from Halloween. And yes, I saw that. And, I saw uh, that in some of your, in your pictures. Ashley and you know, like Beverly uh, Randolph's going to come on board and do some. And uh, you know, we have a lot of fun. We talk about a lot of uh, you know the movies and whatnot, but we also talk about like kind of sort of weird little social issues and it makes it a blast. I got named the they they were the poll and uh, and it was sort of done tongue in cheek, but they, they listed the top hundred screen queens in the world. <laughs> and number I just one love was it. of course uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh yeah, well she's the one that uh, actually that's how they started it was with her. With her. That's right. how the name and, came out. And number, and number two was Linnea. And um, number three was me. And you so, so you're in the top three. Yeah, That's and, awesome. And number four was Heather, and <laughs> uh, and so I, you know, I just laughed about that because I always like to, you know, kick Heather's ass. Cause well, you actually scream, scream a lot more than she did in and, the movies. Uh, so, um, so that's how that got started, and you know, I I give a lot of money to, uh, like when I when Nightmare on Elm Street came out, it was like a lot of there was a lot of trash talk about me, and it was like oh yeah, it was it was pretty bad. And um, so what we did is we took those things, like the people said on IMDb, like, you know, Jesse's a homo or whatnot. Yeah. And um, we turned them into T-shirts, and then we sell the T-shirts, and we give the money to charity for, like, the Trevor Foundation, uh, which is a suicide prevention thing for right. and lesbian teens. That's awesome. And then, uh, you know, we show up at the conventions. I show up at the conventions mainly because, you know what, there are a lot of gay horror films. I mean, a lot of gay horror fans. And, uh, you know, like, a lot of them were nervous to, like, just kind of be themselves when they would go to the conventions. 
And now the conventions have changed so much. I mean, like, Scream Queens is packed, you know, and you can't get in it. And the people, you know, like the real headbangers, scary guys that used to would freak me out, they, like, they love me, you know. I'm, I'm That's awesome. I'm called Peter Man. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I walk around with this guy who's making a movie about the stuff that hard on. And people just love it, you know. They, and I saw my photograph and so and um, you know it's, it's turned around a lot and that's the reason you know I go out to the convention mainly you know it's because of that reason and uh, you know Nightmare on Street which is named the gayest horror film of all time and uh, I'm not embarrassed about that at all I'm actually quite pleased with you should it. embrace it you should because that's you know that's the way it was written we didn't know it at the time but that's what they meant to do so you know we did a good job because we sure gave it up. <laughs> right, and it's a job, and you got paid to do your job, and you did your job well, and you should be proud of, of, of the work oh, you I, did. Oh, I'm, Absolutely. I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm, I'm pleased that I'm done. I just thought it was funny, because I was showing Anthony, I'm like, oh, yeah, this, you can go online and look up his name, and there's pictures where it says Scream Queen, and I said, you know, he's got, like, the, this, the honor of being the first Scream Queen. <laughs> and I just uh, I was like... That that has to come up in our interview because yeah. that is just too awesome. <laughs> He's yeah, like yeah, actually, Elton John was the first Scream Queen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, this no, is before no, Scream Queen was patented. Really and I and I and I like wearing the name proudly. I'm really proud of it. Yeah. And I love traveling with Days of the Dead, and I love doing that panel. And uh, you yeah. know, we've been invited all over the world to do that. So uh, you know, Australia and you know, like we go to Europe a lot. Yeah. And you know, and it's fun to go to the United States. It's interesting, you know, when we go someplace like Boston, uh, you know, the people are really, like, right there. And then when we go to some, like, the southern states, it's, like, it's a little different at first, you know? I mean, like, the vibe's a little different. The, the guys are a little, uh, it takes them a little longer to warm up. Right. But, you know, they always do in the end, and it's, like, and then we all have a big blast. And, you know, what the conventions are like, we have a big party. Oh, and, yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's fantastic. I love oh, my God. The next time you're in Boston, you got to let us know. Let us know. We'd love to go. <laughs> you guys are breaking up just a little tiny bit for me. Uh-oh. So are I, we really? If I go off your point or something. You no, say. that's fine. I was just saying, next time you're in Boston, you should let us know so we can come see you guys. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, I, I actually posted for today. There's a, on my Facebook page, uh, uh, we were, Robert and I were at Rocket Shock in uh, Worcester, Mass., and then um, we uh, we did the, a panel together. The first one it was um, that we had ever done together. Yeah. Robert England and Amanda Wiss and Ken Sago and I. And that's uh, it's about an hour panel, and it's on my Facebook or it's on YouTube. And you should definitely look at it. It's really it's really fun. I love Boston. I love the people in Boston. You know they're 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 great. We love you too. <laughs> You know, like yeah. trying out for Broadway, you know, shows that we're going to go to Broadway. And I got to live, like, at the Copley Plaza Hotel. And, you know, so I like Boston's pretty A list. Yeah, we love it here. And I have a question, though. Why did you stop acting? Uh oh, you there? Are you there, Mark? Yeah, I am. You there? I, I was wondering, why did you stop acting? Uh, you know, mainly around Nightmare on Elm Street, to be really honest with you, the reaction to it, uh, like, sort of surprised me. And um, and I just felt like, you know, like I didn't need the... Uh, I, well, first of all, I'll tell you honestly. Uh, I didn't... I, I think, you know, I got very lucky in the fact that I left show business when I did it. Uh, show business changed right after I left, mm. and I don't really think that I would be a very good uh, celebrity, uh, you know, of like a world type of celebrity, because right. uh, I don't think I would like being stalked like an animal, you know. Mm. I don't think I would like being that famous. The and paparazzi. That's what I was discovering, yeah. well, you know, with uh, yeah, uh, Nightmare on Street. I didn't really like people. Uh, I didn't understand it at the time, you know, I mean, I was basically a kid. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't like people talking about me like they knew me um, and, you know, just projecting this stuff on me. 
Now, if I had it to do all over again, I would tell everybody, you know, to, to screw up. And I would have, you know, I would have relaxed and had fun. Right. But, um, and, you know, I'd probably be a richer man. But I wouldn't have had the life that I have now. And, right. um, and you know what, I have a fantastic life. You know, I live in Mexico. I have an art gallery. Well, I was just going to say, you an art gallery. I've had a very successful life. And then, you know, like late in the game, when I'm, like, sitting at this little art gallery in Mexico City... Uh, you know, uh, Never Sleep Again comes, yeah. and, uh, you know, they've been looking for me for years and years and years, and, you know, I have this whole rebirth in my career. I just, you know, shot a movie in Berlin. Um, you know, I'm doing a documentary called There Is No Jesse. I just wrote yes. a book. Uh, you know, I travel all over the world. I'm talking to you guys, and, you know, so who knows what's going to happen in the future. Oh, yeah. So maybe this was just the like, plan for me all along. So you almost were a, br a brat packer, right? You were, <laughs> I mean, all those all those guys that you were talking about at the beginning that you were auditioning with and stuff. That was a brat I mean, pack. They were a you, they, yeah, that the brat was pack. the brat pack. And then, you know, yeah. I mean, they all went their separate but ways today. I, but. If anyone gives you any crap about Nightmare 2 and the Scream Queen, you just tell them, say, hey, look, if you had Freddy Krueger growing inside your body <laughs> and you had to deal with him pulling his brains uh, out, you know what, you'd uh, scream too. Uh, so maybe we should say hey, and because um, I I'm, I'm really I can't hear you guys really. All right, I would just I would just say I, I'd scream like a little girl too if I had Freddy Krueger haunting me. So if anybody gives me any crap about Scream Queen, okay. they can come to me and I'll set them straight. All <laughs> I right, would definitely scream. Thanks, Mark. Oops. Thank you.